All right, hello everyone. All right, welcome to our next story, The Birth of the Roman World. And this is going to be a topic in my Western Civ 110 class we're going to spend a lot of time on. I'm going to break it up into obviously a lot of lectures for you all. And this first bit of information, I just kind of want to set up what we're going to kind of explore as we go through our ancient Roman history and really focus on just one topic in this short lecture, which is how geography shaped in the, the Roman world and how it says that how geography eventually will shape the Roman Empire. Uh, because this is a theme that I cover in a lot of my topics and a lot of my lectures, and we're going to see that as well. Uh, so let's just start with, you know, the setup of what we're going to be doing in terms of the entire course of Roman history. So let me just stop, uh, set, start with a quick setup here. And this is what we're going to be talking about. You know, when you talk about Roman history, it's break, basically broken up into three phases, what we call the monarchy period. And you see the dates. And again, for all my students, you don't need to memorize the dates. The exact dates don't matter as long as you know circa dates. Uh, what we call the Roman Republic, 509 to 27 BC, and then the Empire, which goes from 27 BC to 476 AD. Um, and so obviously we're going to cover a lot of different information talking about the different stages. We'll spend a lot more time on the Republic and Empire. I don't really spend a lot of time on the monarchy phase. Uh, but we'll start talking about, you know, first the geography, and then we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the birth of Rome, the story of how Rome begins. Uh, we spend, uh, you know, a lot of time talking about Roman values and Roman characteristics and how those Roman values and characteristics help the Republic grow and succeed. And that's going to be a big theme we're going to cover. Um, and then eventually we get to the end of the Republic. Why does the Republic collapse and an empire begin? And what's the difference between a Republic and an empire? So that's gonna be a very important topic we're gonna talk about as well. And then of course, when you get to the empire, you get into all those crazy emperors and uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun uh, from emperors maybe a lot of you have heard of before like Augustus and Constantine. So maybe emperors you haven't heard of before like Diocletian. Um, and then, uh, you know, eventually, you know, we we'll talk about the, the emergence of how Christianity in the Roman world, that's going to be a big topic and the fall of Rome. So there's a lot to cover. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is I do with many early civilizations when I talk about it is geography. So let's look at our map and some key words to understand how geography is important to Rome. And so this is the, the key words and you can kind of get them down as we talk about them here. Uh, but in terms of the geography, um, the things that you have to keep in mind is where Rome is located, of course. So Rome is right over here, right? Right in the center of Italy or pretty close to the center of Italy. And, you know, when Rome starts, it's literally just a tiny dot on a map. It's not even all of Rome. It's a little hill, as we're going to talk about in our next lecture. But there are many geographical features that are going to help Rome thrive. And, you know, as always, I always tell my students, it's not enough just to know the geography. You need to know how the geography impacted it. So, you know, very often I talk about there's two mountains, uh, two seas and two rivers that I want you to know about uh, in terms of why the, the geography is important in Roman history. And so in terms of the mountains, the first thing we're going to see are these two mountains known as the Apennines and the Alps. Uh, so the Alps, of course, most people know where the Alps are, just located right over here, north of Italy. The Apennines run along more the eastern side of Italy. And the thing is with these mountains, why are mountains important? Well, mountains provide you protection, right? Um, mountains provide you uh, very, it's very hard to cross the mountains. In fact, almost no one's even going to try to cross, cross the Alps, uh, but eventually somebody will. That's going to make for one heck of a story in a future lecture. Uh, but for the most part, those mountains provide a lot of protection, right? A lot, what keeps you from being invaded very easily. There's two seas, very important seas, the Med Mediterranean Sea and the Adriatic Sea. And you can see them both on this map as well, the Mediterranean, the Adriatic Sea. There are several other seas as well, but as long as you know those two, you're good. Why are the seas important? Well, especially the Mediterranean Sea, you know, seas aren't like oceans. Seas are a lot easier to navigate a sea than to navigate an ocean. And so look where Italy is and Rome is it's jutting out right into the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, which means when Rome gets going, it's going to be very easy for them to, you know, move in different directions across the seas. And eventually, as you're going to see on this map and other maps, 
basically conquer the entire Mediterranean Sea, north, south, east, and west, an amazing achievement. Um, and so the fact they're located where they are is very important to Roman success. And, you know, you have the Adriatic Sea there as well. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be important. Rivers, there is a number of important rivers in Italy. I just gave you the name of two of them. The Tiber River, which is the one that runs right through the city of Rome. The Arno River, beautiful river. It actually runs up in further part of Italy around modern day Florence. Um, and, you know, both these rivers, you know, do what rivers do, as I've covered in my other lectures. They provide food, they provide water, they provide uh, fertilization of land, they attract animals to hunt. All the things I've talked about in my other lectures are important for this as well. Another really important element of geography is climate, right? So when you talk about uh, the key words, one of the things I also want you to keep in mind is just the climate in Italy. And I always been asked my students when I'm lecturing in class, what's the climate like in Italy? And it's very much the same climate we have in, in Southern California. And you go, well, why is that important? Well, you know, think about all the resources that we have in California, right? It always amazes me anytime California has some like harsh economic problems and stuff because we have so many natural resources here. You have, you know, coast uh, coastline, you have good weather, it's easy to grow uh, crops, it's easy to grow food. And Italy has that advantage as well. They have a lot of that climate, which makes it easy to grow food and crops, and uh, it's not too hot, not too cold. Um, and so that, that's a big advantage for allowing a civilization to grow and develop. And then other, all the other resources they have, right? Whether it's, you know, forest areas that you, you, can, you can use for, for lumber, uh, mines of all sorts of metals that they have, right? A marble, right? One of the things they have is a lot of marble there. Uh, you know, very often you go into, I've been to Italy, and when you go to Italy and you see a lot of the homes and buildings, they're, they're, there's this amazing marble. In fact, if any of you ever drive down the four or five freeway and they go to the Getty uh, Center, um, and you see it, it's all made of marble. They actually got that marble from Italy. They just excavated, a, I think they bought an entire mountain there and excavated it themselves. Um, so the geography, you know, whether it's these mountains or rivers or the climate, are all key in helping Rome succeed and thrive. So that's the first bit of information I want you to know. Um, you know, and you know, as long as you kind of know that about the geography, you're good. And then from there, we're going to move on in the next topic and talk about the story of the birth of Rome and then move on to some other really cool things. So this, this first intro is just kind of setting it up and knowing the geography. All right. Hope all that's clear. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.